clear are you on your life's purpose? And how confident are you that you're totally following your calling? These are the questions that I ask myself every day, like all day long, because I'm so aware that life is short and I want to be living for my purpose. And so if I'm not doing that, what am I doing? Like I'm just existing, I'm just here, just, you know, paying bills and working for money. And like, I, I want to live higher than that. You know, I want to live out whatever my purpose was. So I'm super in tune with that. But I know that a lot of people aren't, you know, most people that I meet are just living life. They're just living life. You know, there's not much greater. And sometimes they don't even know what their purpose is. They're not really sure that they've been given a calling. And I'm here to say that you totally have a calling and you totally have a purpose in this world, but I wanna help you find that. So today we are going to talk about exactly how do you distinguish what's a calling and how do you know your life purpose? All right, let's talk about it. Welcome to episode 42 of the Four Purpose Live Show where I help you get clear, get focused, and be impactful by showing you how to fully step into the calling that you've been given without taking on that common narrative that nonprofits have to struggle. That's right, together we can get you in your sweet spot using your strengths and talents to serve this world and build a movement for your cause simply by living for purpose, on purpose. I'm Rebecca Britt, your host, and today we are talking about figuring out what that purpose is, okay? And how do you know what's a calling? And if you are somebody that has followed a calling or you thought you followed a calling and you started a nonprofit, but you are on the struggle bus, you are like, this is really difficult. And boy, God, I didn't think when I followed in faith my calling that I would be given no support and no funding. And I just didn't think that this is what living for purpose felt like. If that is you, then I want you to go grab my free web class at forpurposelive.com slash secrets. That web class is the secrets to running a nonprofit without killing yourself. And yes, you can do that. You can live for purpose rather than for a nonprofit. Okay. Forpurposelive.com slash secrets. Go grab that and stop killing yourself. Okay. So today we are talking about following your calling and finding your calling. How do you find this calling that people keep talking about? How do you live for purpose? Okay. So the first point is let's talk about calling versus purpose because I use them interchangeably a lot, but they really are not the same thing. So what I believe is your life's purpose is like your overall reason you've been put on this world, okay? So your purpose is not a career, it's not a program. Uh, and the reason why is because I used to like, so I have a program where I serve foster and adopted kids and I feel totally like I was meant to do that, but my family doesn't fit in that. How I, you know, interact in other jobs. I have other things I do. I have volunteer with other organizations. I'm a nonprofit consultant. So the foster care, you know, program and part of my purpose feels very niche and not all encompassing of all the amazing things that I was meant to do. So my purpose in this world didn't feel like it was just this foster care program, but I thought forever that my purpose was to serve kids in foster care, that I was put on this world to serve that population. But I, my purpose was more than that. So how did I reconcile that? Well, I came up with an umbrella purpose that is to help people serve others. I really feel like my purpose on this world is to help people serve others. And what's great about that is everything fits in. If I lost the foster care thing uh, right now and I didn't continue doing that, I would still be able to help people serve others. Through this channel, I would be able to help people serve others through my nonprofit consulting. I can help people serve others by being a really good mom to my kids because I'm making them good people and they will grow up to serve others. It also helps me understand that what I'm not good at, okay? Like what I wasn't put on this earth, earth to do. So I was not put on this earth, I don't believe, to do direct service, to actually go and speak to, you know, one individual foster family and give them um, intense family-based services or to go be a mentor to one child. I believe that I am more at a strategic or administrative level and that I need to help nonprofits develop their programs or 
if I'm going to help foster kids, I'm going to develop a program like I did to help foster kids. I'm going to train mentors on how to work with them. So I'm, my purpose is really to help people serve others. So I'm kind of like a step removed from the others that they're serving. Okay. And I found this purpose by starting a nonprofit and realizing that like, it was really, really hard. So I can identify with people that are trying to serve others, but it's just not that easy. And those are the people that I try to serve. So it all fits within my life purpose. Well, so what was the foster care thing? What are all my jobs that I've taken, all my career paths? What are, um, you know, if I feel like I'm supposed to go and write this grant for this company, is that my purpose? No, those are callings. And I do feel like you have a whole bunch of callings. And I feel like all of the callings bubble up and should fit under your life's purpose, okay? So I felt 100% called to have children. That might be a biological thing. But I also felt 100% called to start my nonprofit. I felt 100% called to start a business being a nonprofit consultant. I felt called to uh, go step on to a place where I could volunteer at. And I followed those callings and they led to a bigger vision, a bigger purpose that God had for me that I couldn't see right in the moment, right? So I'm just like, I guess, I don't know, I'm feeling called to go walk onto this property. I'm going to go do that. It feels light. It feels right. I go and do that and then I meet this person there that's been wanting to start a nonprofit for foster kids, but they don't have any time and they don't have a degree and oh, you do have those things. And, and so like you start to see how God's working, but you couldn't have known all that. So I feel like you're just given the calling, you're given the inkling, you're giving the interest and you follow it and then you get to know uh, the plan, which is always much bigger than our dreams, right? So to define calling versus purpose. For me, purpose is an umbrella statement. You do not want a specific career, a specific program, a specific initiative that you're working on to be your purpose because it will keep you limited. Your purpose should be an overarching statement like mine is to help people serve others that everything can fall under so that I can feel like I'm living a purposeful life when I am with my kids. I can feel like I'm living a purposeful life when I am being a good wife. I feel like I can be, live a purposeful life when I'm an employee, when I am a consultant, when I'm running my own nonprofit. All these hats that I wear all fit within my purpose. It's not like, oh, I'm just living on purpose when I'm working on this one thing God called me to do. No, my life, how I show up for all aspects of my life, that's my life purpose. So however you show up to life may be your life's purpose. So really think about what is a statement like to help people serve others? What's a short statement that really, and it might be like to show people the power of God, you know, it might be like to share kindness and like, what's the thing that you really do that Everything that you have going on fits under this umbrella and you can start feeling like I'm living a purposeful life regardless of what I'm doing, okay? Even me going on vacation, going on a nice cruise and treating myself and feeling like great about life. I could be like, oh, well, this is just R&R. &R. This isn't really my uh, purpose. It so is your purpose. It's my purpose. I want to help people serve others. And one way I do that is help people understand that they need breaks, that they need sustainability, that they need time to go out and see this beautiful world God has given us, that they need time to fill up their cup, that they need a life that feels like rewarding. So me going on vacation and having these experiences and having time in my day to go to the beach, to hang out, that's me leading by example. And that's me living in my purpose, showing like, yes, this is what God intended for us. So all of it fits under this purpose statement. Okay. So then you're like, okay, I've got my purpose statement. How do I figure out callings? This is really big. Okay. This is, this is tough. And this is one that I struggle with all the time. You have to tap into your knowing as far as callings go. So if you want to know like, what's a calling? How do I feel a calling? You need to tap into your knowing. And this is where I'm about to empower you a lot. 
you might not know what your knowing is, but you know, God lives inside of us. You know, you do know what is aligned and what feels light and what feels right. Okay. And so you have those feelings when somebody says to you like, oh, we could go buy a house in the mountains. Ooh, automatically you could be like, that's scary. It doesn't feel aligned. Okay. And then there's times when you're like, gosh, this just feels so right. Like lately I've been thinking about getting some acreage and I'm like, okay, why am I thinking about getting acreage? Like I'm literally obsessed about it. And I'm like talking to God, listening to my knowing, searching my, you know, I'm pointing to my stomach area. You can't see that. But, um, I'm like pointing to my stomach area because I'm like deep inside, like what does getting this acreage feel like? And it feels light and right. And it makes my heart joyous. And I'm like, okay, so th this is what tells me like, all right, I'm on the right track. And then I just think about it. I ponder on it. I meditate on it. I talk to God. I give it back to God. I say, if you really want this, like make it happen. I'll follow it. I will go get some acreage. Um, and I do things to follow it. I go on Zillow. I look online. I see how much it might cost. I do some research. I don't force it. Okay. Because if you have to force it, you're not allowing God to work. Okay. You're not allowing the flow in a calling should be like a flow. When I started the stable moments program, my nonprofit, I, it was like, I couldn't be stopped. I showed up to volunteer at a horse rescue. They had a position open up, like everything fell open for me to do this thing. Okay. And even when there were challenges and stuff, that was like God refining the path. That would be like me looking on Zillow in one area and then like that whole market sucks and I'm not really able to find anything I like and God being like, you're supposed to be over here. Okay. And me fi finally finding a place. Am I, I'm not like trying to say, I know what God, like, this is my relationship with God. Okay. Your relationship could be completely different. Um, and when I'm talking about God, I'm talking about my calling, my knowing. Okay, so tapping into your knowing is literally following your strengths and interests, what feels light, what feels right. So say you're just somebody that's going to work right now, you're killing yourself, you're surviving, you're just, you feel like you're not living a life that's like totally following your calling, or you don't know what your next step is, which is often where I'm at. If you completely don't know, that's when you need to sit sit and meditate, clear your brain and take time to listen. Call it meditating, call it a contemplative prayer. I just clear my brain and say, I'm going to stop coming up with ideas. And if I want a calling, you better start listening. You've got to just like, because we have a very linear way of thinking. We think the house will be paid off in 10 years and I'll get this job. And with 3% raises over this many years, I'll be able to save this much money. Yeah. Or God can do whatever he wants. Okay. So don't think linear, linearly, believe, have faith that any miracle, any possibility can happen. Anything can switch up at a moment's notice. So if that's true, then you just give it all up, surrender, and then listen. And listening to me feels a lot like me meditation and it's really hard to do. And it's something that I resist doing all the time. And guess why? Because it feels good to have control and it feels good to lead the way. So another thing that I have an issue with, like personally, is deciphering between like my flesh and what God wants me to do or deciphering between um, desire and true calling because desire feels pretty light and good too, huh? So I'm like, am I just wanting this acreage because like I'm trying to escape my life right now or am I just wanting this acreage because like, I want it, but like it, it has to do more with my wants. You know, do I want a new car because God wants me to have a new car and he thinks that I should show people that if you live on purpose, you get a new car? <laughs> or is that like God being like, no, you should buy a new car right now. Okay. When I look in my knowing, deep in my knowing, God has given me a great car. It's, you know, I don't need a new car. No, that doesn't feel aligned. It, it, there's bigger things to think about than a car. But if I think about acreage, I'm like, oh my gosh, I keep trying to put this thing to rest. And I just feel like something's coming over me to continue looking at acreage. There could be like, you should take up crocheting. 
you should start cooking, you should go down to the community center, like any of these little things that are interesting things, go do them. If you're like, I should find a new job, but da -da -da -da, put out applications, put out 10 applications, it doesn't hurt. You're calling if you just have to step forward. And then if that's the path you're supposed to be on, things will work out. That's the beauty in this. Down. A lot of things might come in with like fear. So recently I felt like I've had a calling, another one, I have a lot of them, but I've had a calling to go volunteer again at a horse rescue. Um, because I'm part of my like wanting acreage. I'm like, okay, before you just go buy acreage, how about you go be on some acres again, get your hands dirty, work with horses. Like you used to so much, like go, um, scratch that itch. So maybe God put acreage in my head just to get me to volunteer at this place. Like I don't know, but I'm just walking along. I'm just following in faith, right? And so I had a lot of reasons to not go volunteer. I have kids. I can't, do their volunteer orientation's only on Saturdays. Who am I gonna get to watch the kids? You know, it's just not a good time. Maybe when my kids are a little older, I'll have more time to volunteer. I've got all my business and work and all that stuff going on. Like, it's not a great time. Okay, but I feel like this is exactly what I need right now. So. How can I make that happen? And you sit back in the possibilities and you're like, I can get, I can go to one. I'm not committing to like a year of volunteering. I'm committing to like one volunteer orientation. Just go to one volunteer orientation. Just look up on YouTube, how to crochet, just whatever you're being led to do. Look at properties on Zillow, like just whatever you feel like you're being called to do, like just take the first step. Okay. At some point when it's not aligned, if you are thinking, looking into your heart and your stomach about like, does this feel aligned? At some point you will get the answer. Like, no, this is not aligned. If I went and st started at that volunteer place and they were like, the only way you can volunteer here is you give three days a week. And, it, and I'm like, but God, you told me to volunteer. So I must have to do three days a week. No, if I had to do three days a week and it didn't work for me, I would be like, oh, there's my answer. This isn't aligned. Like, how does three days a week for me feel? Does that feel sustainable? No. Okay. And maybe some of your childhood trauma stuff comes up and you're like, yeah, but I'm supposed to give and this is what God called me to do. And as soon as you get into that, like, trust me, if God wanted you to do something, he'd free up your schedule. You'd be able to do it. Like you'd be able to do it. You shouldn't have to like push or squish something to work. Okay. And you shouldn't have to bend and staple and fold yourself to follow a calling. It should be flowy, flowy, but you take the first step and you don't live in fear. It's just faith. It's just one small commitment. And then the next thing gets revealed to you, the next thing. And you only keep walking forward if it feels light and flowy and aligned. And I want you to start really thinking to yourself, this is the exercise I do, the energy. What's the energy of going and buying a property today? Mm, I don't have the means to do it right now. It feels rushed. It feels a little manic. What's the energy of looking at some properties and planning for it and maybe just going to visit this horse property? Yeah, that feels light. That feels good. That feels aligned. Okay, let's go do that. Okay. So even if the end goal is going to be that I have some property or some acreage, it doesn't mean like you had a calling, go do it. Like it, it's not, you're not going to miss out on it. Okay. So keep walking forward, keep feeling your way, do the next right thing and just be really introspective and exploratory. How does this feel? How do I feel when I do this? Am I feeling like at peace or this is where I want to be? Do I feel a sense of belonging? Do I feel a sense of rightness or do I feel a sense of dread or overwhelm or martyrdom? Okay. Your feelings are really, really good ways of understanding your knowing because God lives in us. He's our homing device. So he's just trying to bring us back to like home. This is right. This feels right. This is good for us. Okay. Now your Childhood trauma or the way you have received your programming and your upbringing and all of that is going to lead into this. And this is where it's tough, tough because our coping mechanisms that we've taught ourselves help us feel good. So me taking on a big client and doing a whole bunch of work for them and them telling me, wow, Rebecca, you're amazing. 
uh, thank you so much. And me being able to say that I won them $500,000 in grants like feels good. So sometimes I get this like juicy energy where I feel like, yeah, that's aligned. Mm. God's energy isn't like activated. You know, there's a lot of energy behind that. I feel like God's energy is like you sit back and you're like, do I have to work that hard to get the accolades from people? And do I need to prove my value? That's all stuff that I took on in childhood. Or I like the energy and this is the energy I tap into when I'm trying to tap into my knowing. Or is it possible that I sit back, that I'm valuable whether or not I earn $500,000 for somebody, whether or not I prove that I'm valuable, whether or not I write this grant in two days. I'm valuable and I will be able to get the recognition and the value and the money and all of the things that I'm supposed to get without proving it. Maybe there's some opportunities that could come to me that feel like this energy, sat back, not feel like, oh yeah, I need to get a property. I need to buy it today. Okay. So there's a difference in this energy. There's activated energy. There's manic energy. There's I'm following my calling and I'm going to be the next big thing on YouTube and I'm going to do this and I'm going to prove. And then there's the energy of like, you know, I think I'm going to go try this thing. It feels right. I'm going to see what happens. And you know what? If it's not meant to be, it won't be. So there's really no need to get activated and like, if I do this, this will happen. If you don't get attached to the outcome, that's living in your calling. Okay? Finding it. So if you're trying to find your calling, get quiet. Start listening. Start choosing based on your knowing. What feels light? Does this feel light? Does this feel heavy? Okay, this feels light. I'm going to take the next step. See if you get revealed more. See what happens next, okay? And you want to walk forward in faith. So finally, when you are like getting quiet and you feel something that feels like this feels aligned, this feels like it could be a calling, this feels like God talking to me, this feels like this could be something exciting for me or this could be more, then walk forward in faith. That's really the last part. And walking forward in faith is just what I talked about. It's letting go of fear. It's just trying it out. It's not putting any of that pressure on yourself. It is saying, I don't really know where this is leading or this seems a little silly to me or I can't believe I'm even considering a career change or, oh my gosh, I'm God, if, if I change directions, let's say you switch your mission or you shut down your nonprofit, which I did. This feels like it could be the worst thing to do because I thought I was following my calling with other in anything that you do. That's a mistake. He's seen that it's already been written. Okay. And he's going to use it for your testimony later. Trust me. I mean, I failed a lot and it's all for refinement and it's all so that I can empathize with the people, everybody else. I can empathize. Like we all fail. Okay. So walking forward in faith is just like, Let's take steps, really intentional steps. Check your knowing, take the next step, check your knowing, take the next step. And you will be amazed at what it turns into. Okay. I literally chose to volunteer based on a calling however many years ago, 10 years ago. And I started volunteering at a local horse farm. And then I felt like God was really pushing me to start my own nonprofit and then really serve these kids. And then all this stuff happened at the nonprofit that made me shut it down. But it's because, and I could say like, oh God, I follow my calling and you made me shut my program down. And this is the worst. And I sort of could have started crying. I did cry. I cried a lot. But he revealed to me, actually, you were supposed to, now that you figured out that model, you're supposed to write it up and you're supposed to publish it and you're supposed to license it to other facilities because God's plan wasn't for you to serve 25 people in Woodstock. God's plan was for you to serve people all across the nation. Okay. And I did that and I licensed the program now and it's, you know, serving kids all over the nation. We have all these, all sorts of locations now across the U S. Okay. And it started by me stepping on to a, another nonprofit and saying, Hey, do you think I could brush some of your horses? And do you think I could bring some foster kids along? And now I do less. I'm not there managing mentors. I do less. My life is great. And I'm serving way more kids. So that's what I'm just talking about. That's an example of like, you just start 
If somebody had told me you're going to develop a program model and write a book and, and license this program, trademark it and license it, and you're going to have sale moments locations across the United States when I was the kid walking onto a, I would have said, no way. I, I would have been scared and overwhelmed. Okay. And that's why he gives us bite-sized callings because callings feel right and they're easy enough to do. Okay. And do I have big, hairy, audacious visions? Yes, I do. I have this vision that I'm going to start a stable refuge, a place where um, foster parents can go to get a week away because we don't support foster parents. And 50% of foster parents quit within their first year. And I feel like we should be coming around and, and helping them. And what's one thing I want more than anything? Being a biological parent? A week away. Okay. And they can't find respite for their kids and they can't even get people to watch their kids because you have to be certified by the state to even watch their kids. It's like, it's a whole thing. And I think we should be able to give amazing people that step up to keep unwanted, abandoned, abused children under their roof a week vacation. I think we can give them that. But I don't know how to give people, I don't know how to give vacations away. So I just have a conversation about, with God about it all the time. And I believe he's going to bring that to fruition. And I'm just here and I'm open and I'm listening. And maybe the acreage desire calling has something to do with me having nice cabins and places for these people to go. I don't know. And I'm not ready. I don't have the money for to buy a property right now. So, but I know God could give me the money tomorrow to buy a property. So I'm just ready and willing and whatever uh, he has planned, like I'm all ears and I'm here and I'm checking into my knowing and I'm making sure that I say no. I do feel like I have received a lot quicker by saying no to the things that are not aligned. Just this week, I got a big ask for a lot of money to do a really hard thing. <laughs> and in the past, I would have said, yes, I'll take that money and I can do that for you and I'll dance and, but I checked my knowing and it was like, you don't need to do all that and you don't need that money. Nope. You can get your money being you showing up. Um, you don't need that. So I turned it down and if I've never felt lighter, I've never felt better. Okay. Because I'm going to do things that are aligned. I'm going to do things that, and, and you'll do things that aren't aligned. You'll do things that that aren't, but the longer you stay in something that's not aligned, the harder it gets, the more like your stomach goes, cause you know, cause you're in it and you don't want to be there. And the quicker you realize it and you honor your knowing, honor yourself when your stomach feels twisted or you feel disgusted, just doing something, or you're like, this is not aligned. This is not what I should be doing. The quicker you step out and start saying no to those things, you are like, just opening yourself up to the opportunities that are aligned. Okay. Think about how much energy it takes to do things that are not aligned. It is a lot of work to do things that you are not wanting to do or that your soul isn't wanting to do, or that you don't feel like you completely belong there. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of negative energy and it causes disease in our body and it causes dis-ease in our mind. Okay. So the more we can say, I'm honoring myself, I'm not showing up for things that are not aligned with me. The more we do live in our calling, we live for purpose. And that's why when I say you live for purpose on purpose, you get this life that feels light and airy and grateful and holy smokes. Is this amazing life possible? Like, do I really pinch me? Like I don't have to work that hard and I can still be valuable and I'm still living in, in God's purpose and I'm still making a big impact and I'm not killing myself and, and I'm enjoying it. Can you imagine that we don't think that we should like enjoy our lives? Most of us feel like we should struggle. Like it should be hard. You should have to work hard. You should have to do things you don't like to do. And yes, of course, do I think that like we should work and we should work like, yes, of course we should put in the time. But if there's a life that's more aligned out there that you think, it, God, it would be nice if I could do this, you can do it.
And I'm telling you the one person that is limiting you from doing it is you. So to recap, to find your calling, get quiet, listen for it, step forward, tap into your knowing. Does this feel heavy? Does this feel light? And then walk forward in faith. Try it. And as soon as you realize, nope, this isn't aligned, just shut it down. No judgment. Get to try again the next day and just start having this conversation with God and with yourself. Get more uh, in tune with you and your body and your feelings about the things you take on so that you can start making these four purpose decisions. And then you really are living for purpose, on purpose. And oh, I'm here to tell you, I'm not perfect, but I'm here to tell you it gets better and better and better and better. And uh, life really is, it really can be that good. Okay. So if you are, if you've started a nonprofit and you feel like you're killing yourself and you're like, wow, Rebecca, everything you just talked about is so far away from me, then please go grab my web class, The Secrets to Running a Nonprofit Without Kill without killing yourself. That's at fourpurposelive.com slash secrets. I would love to hear in the comments what your calling is. Like, and even if it's just a small calling, like I've been wanting to do this lately and I think that it's totally aligned and I'm going to do it today. Like claim a calling that you're going to act on today. Or if you're living full in your purpose, I'd love to hear your purpose too. Please like and subscribe to this channel. It really, really helps. Leave a comment and until next time, thank you so much for your service to this world.